What up guys, my name is Dorshi and today's video we're going to be talking about the sad truth that many of us have to face. Solicue is a form of psychological torture. So brutal that many consider it to be a war crime. But since us gamers are just anxiety filled meatbags, many of us have no friends to play with. In order to find success in our alone wolf climb to Radiant, we're going to have to follow a couple of important ideas. Accept that your teammates aren't going to be on board if you bring out your best notebook strat. They probably aren't even listening to half the things you're saying anyways. This doesn't mean forego any attempts at having a predetermined plan. If you want to get some teamwork going, keep it simple. Try asking one or two people to accompany you to a part of a map and maybe plan out the first encounter. A quick, yo Phoenix, wanna flash mid for me is ideal. Or even, Brim, can you smoke garage window? At the beginning of the round, Anything more and you'll be pulling your teammates away from where they feel comfortable playing. Being a solo queue IGL in general is a detriment to your team in the long run. Many consider that poker at the end of the day is a game of skill. Obviously, there is a substantial luck factor when it comes to which cards are dealt, are kidding me? but it's how these players adapt to each situation they are in that separates good players from great players. The same can be said for the matchmaking system for Valorant. The teammates you are given are just cards that are pulled from a deck. You get bad teammates, you get go to teammates. Just the nature of the teammate RNG pull. It's about how you play around these factors that make a solo queue god. The Boondocks had it right. Thanks, Granddad. Granddad, what do you do when you can't do nothing, but there's nothing you can do? You do what you can. A concept I've accepted to help me understand how to better communicate with my teammates is assuming everyone I play with is an NPC. They have set dialogue trees with different branches, kind of like Mass Effect or any Telltale game. You can't just change what options you have in their trees, but you can choose how you interact with them. And unfortunately, these are your teammates, so keeping them from tilting is your best chance at winning. Now, this doesn't mean you gotta brown nose your teammates at every moment of the game, just being a neutral party is good enough. If anything you can say can be taken in a negative way, they either don't care, aren't listening, or could get tilted off of it. If you've played any game with voice communication, you've felt the wrath of some angry gamers. Shut up! Or getting your ears blasted by a couple of kids who just don't stop talking. The mute button is your best friend when it comes to grinding ranks. If you know that someone's comms are going to hinder your gameplay in any way, just slam the mute button. It makes playing the game an infinitely more enjoyable experience and allows you to actually focus on your gameplay. Some might say that you are losing callouts if you are muting your teammates, and that is true in some cases, but from personal experience, most if not all the people that need a mute have pretty bad callouts or aren't even calling out in the first place. Also, when you do mute, please don't announce it to the entire team. It just comes off as passive aggressive and honestly no one cares if you mute someone. Don't make muting people a huge deal. You're just annoying, I'm muting you. As we talked about earlier in the video, the matchmaking system will give you random teammates. Some garbage ones, but most importantly, some amazing teammates. When you are given one of these unicorns on your team, understand that it's okay to change your playstyle to accommodate this. Using your abilities or your positioning to set up your teammates who are popping off can be more beneficial to your team overall. Or even playing a bit more passive to give your insane teammates more time to find openings, rather than trying to force a play that doesn't even need to be made. Being a player that's easy to carry is a huge asset to a team. Starting each round with a set idea of what you're gonna do for the first 20 seconds of the round is what I like to call money makers. Basically, you want to have simple plans that you can consistently execute by yourself that get you either a favorable duel or map control with somewhat high success. This concept is applicable to both defending and attacking, but is more relevant to the latter since taking the initiative is way more important. A great example is playing Cypher on Haven and caging the a Long cross. You're able to sneak into short or fake presence. You can even cam long or short to check deeper angles. Once you've practiced these plans countless times, you'll become a god in these common scenarios. 
A common mistake that I see all the time at lower ranks is being overly passive. Not all frags are created equal. In general, you want the frags that have impact on how the round is determined. Don't be the super lurch player that's catching an insanely late rotate when your teammates are trying to find openings for themselves. Being the first or second person in when you're hitting a site gives you a position to get these impact frags. But if you're not one of these two players, at least assist them with your abilities if possible. Climbing solo queue is a giant war with your opponents, teammates, and your own mental state. Hopefully with these tips, it'll make the progression just a tad bit easier. If you liked the video, make sure to check out my Twitch. I stream two to three times a week. Thanks and enjoy the rest of your day.